Benjamin, we are now representing yeah. Europe, Asia, and North America. Correct. We right. cover the whole world. Very <laughs> diverse. So Indeed. our se- session has started now. So let me take over, please. So good morning, good afternoon to all the viewers. Um, it is a great honor for us to be part of the Horaces Asia meeting. Topic of today's discussion is the arts, movies, and cinema, exploring new avenues for impact. The COVID nineteen had profound re- repercussions on the movie industry. As filmmakers and artists are struggling to get back uh, on the set, the cinema world is also witnessing rapid transformation with the advent of the online streaming platforms. So, I would like to start um, our today's session uh, with uh, Mr. Fred Wang, founder of Salon Media. So, um, I am in uh, United States. So it's uh, early AM for us. So, I think in your part of the world, Fred, it's good evening, good afternoon. So, thank you for joining us. So, my first question to you is. What do you think uh, the new norms of filmmaking are now that most uh, countries in the world are, you know, in the post pandemic uh, phase of um, what we all experienced last year? Thank you so much. I think it's a great question. I would like to have everybody who participate in our conference to be aware the whole world will have a big change that you never happened before. First is because of the pandemic. Everybody has to go on technology like we are now meeting all over the air. Number two is film. There's no more film. There's no more videotape. Everything is digital from making to producing to distributing it to receiving it. So the whole world have to be adapt to the whole norm of the new economy. With that as a base, then we have to look at what's going on today. Because of the pandemic, because of the economic change, because of the technology of our media industry, but the real physical economy, Asia has been growing faster, bigger than the Europe and America continent. So everybody's watching on the how Asia has come out from the pandemic. And we hope today we are representing people, good friends, the expert from Boston, from Belgium, from Asia, of course, and uh, Hong Kong and Singapore, we always become a key part of covering the northern Asia and the Southern Asia, and we can work together and how we can see this change of the future. Which is number one, the, the economic will have to now focus on zero carbon. Within the next five years, 10 years, there's no more automobile using gasoline. These are all electric car. Within the next 10, 20 years, all the power station will not allow to use the carbon coal, coal mining and whatever the traditional energy, zero carbon. But what else we have to do is media content, how to educate people to have a new lifestyle. Instead of buying a new car every year, how to drive your car for the next 10, 20 years. I just have an electric car. For the last eight years, I never go to the, the uh, factory for overhaul to try to lubricate or changing uh, the engine. Now, what if we talk about the air condition, refrigerator, mobile phone, don't buy a new phone every year. So those are the things we have to look at. How about your dinner, lunch, breakfast? No more plastic waste material. You are talking about your whole life change. Instead of depending on the on the industrial life, how about depending on the people's lifestyle? That means education. We can save 30-40% just by people live modestly, not to waste, and take care of your garbage. 
So for that, I think our media industry is extremely important for the future next 10, 20, 30 years of economy change. The media is not just entertainment or game to fight on, on for the money on the, on the time passing. It's educating a new young generation of the people that can be live better and save the world. I hope my in, introduction is appropriate. I will listen to our colleague to give me your feedback. Thank you so much. Hello. Priya, you need to unmute yourself. So um, my apologies, uh, it's early morning here. So, uh, so Fred, you really brought some good points, uh, you know, in this discussion, especially, you know, uh, with uh, uh, one was the, the climate, climate action. The second one was collaboration. The third was education and awareness. And, you know, there is no better medium than the, than the medium of media. I mean, you know, the medium of entertainment and filmmaking in bringing, you know, the social causes and narratives and social impact um, to to a broader audience uh, uh, globally. So um, uh, talking about technology, you know, uh, I, w I wanted to, because you brought in technology as well, uh, you know, during pandemic, what we had seen is um, uh, OTT platforms gain huge surge in subscription. What do you anticipate the trend to be now that the theaters are opening? Fred? Oh, my, my, uh, my question. Uh, I think the technology, technology really play a big part of it. As I said, we are now communicating in three continents and over the phone with video. And obviously the technology and education is important one is how to use the technology. Two is how to have people learn to follow a new lifestyle. Medical operation and uh, uh, every, every sector of the industry were, were involved with the education. And I think uh, we have to look at the uh, technology now is become how to be safely to use the worry part, as I mentioned, the media is like equal to a ammunition, like a gun. The media is also like a money who can do a good things or do a good bad things. So how do we educate the people to better utilize money, better like utilize your weapons, and even more today important, better learn how to manage and utilize your media products, educating for the young people, or to the old people or mature people. You can storm the White House, you can storm the Capitol Hill by educating people, say, go to, go to make your trouble, or any country, turn around your government, right? I think it is important today for us to educate people how to better use your material, use your media. I hope I answer your question. That's technology, because you won't be able to do it 50 years ago, 100 years ago. The film is too slow in distributing. Mm. Now today, anybody can push a button and the whole world will watch you. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, no, I agree. I agree what you said in terms of the speed and the, you know the accessibility part of it. But I'll I'll hold on because you know you you are a veteran uh, in in this uh, business of media, and we have uh, uh, some very enterprising entrepreneurs who have uh, you know stepped into this world of uh, arts and movies. So now I will go to uh, Mr. Puneet uh, from India. Thank you for joining us. That's my my motherland. So. Uh, it's always good to see somebody from uh, India uh, uh, that I'll be speaking to. So, Puneet, as a founder of October Cinema, you had a, a very interesting film and, you know, The Fakir of Venice that did really very well. So tell me, uh, what do you see uh, way uh, Bollywood, as we say, in, it's basically Hindi cinema, 
or Indian cinema is the main and primarily the Hindi cinema is called as Bollywood. Uh, that's how it's known to the world. Returning to the Bollywood of the 20 teens, uh, now that, you know, again, uh, we are, pandemic is behind us. So uh, thank you, Priya, for uh, stimulating this wonderful session and conversation. And thanks, uh, Fred, for all the insight uh, that came from your end. Uh, I, I would like to share uh, two perspectives uh, in relation to this particular question and this session. See, what uh, we observe, what we're seeing now is, you know, I don't know if you've heard of uh, uh, this or this term is used widely globally. But, you know, uh, right now, uh, I, I keep reading a lot about revenge eating, okay, where, uh, you know, the fact that for almost, depending on whichever part of the world uh, all of us were, restaurants and uh, eateries and places to go out had been shut down for a long time. Um, and I was amazed to see uh, or some friends who are restauranters saying that, you know, I have I've been, I've been to this business for 40 years, 30 years. And uh, no matter what occasion, what festival, the kind of rush we've seen uh, in our uh, outlets has been never seen before. It's just insane. Uh, the reason why I gave this example is that in India, uh, it's just been a very short time that uh, the cinemas have opened back, the films have come back. And uh, we just had the first release uh, in Bombay, which is a hub of Bollywood, Mumbai City, uh, which is a hub of Bollywood. And it just, t uh, the cinemas opened only a week back, or I think two weeks now, yeah. And uh, we see that numbers were fantastic. Uh, they were pretty much pre-COVID days. Uh, the fact that, you know, people were wanting, it, it was not about uh, anything else, but it was more about the experience where movie, watching cinema uh, is not just about going and seeing good content or seeing their favorite actors and stars or, you know, artists, but it's also about going with your family, spending some time, having some popcorn, some pizzas, some colas and so on and so forth. So people really miss this because it's an integral part of their mm -hmm. lifestyle. Uh, so what has happened is, uh, so this is one side of the coin that I expect a similar revenge eating thing to probably see revenge cinema viewing, uh, at least for some time now where, you know, uh, things. Uh, but at the, uh, at the flip side of it, uh, with the way people had no. Sorry, I had Fred coming. Okay. So at the same time, on the flip side, uh, you know, with the uh, spike in the entire consumption of OTT, uh, because that was the only option when it came to cinema or content viewing during this last one and a half year or so, it has given the, the pandemic has also been a, a blessing in disguise for a lot of uh, content creators, I would say where uh, now people don't just think of making content, films, cinema for the theaters, for the, uh, you know, uh, brick and mortar exhibition space, but specifically for also, uh, you know, the OT platforms. So they, they create content, they create budgets, they create uh, subjects which is uh, suiting certain audiences and certain OTT platforms. So... Uh, Definitely a spike uh, or in terms of the number of projects we hear lately, the number of people who are getting involved, the number of employment that has been created uh, and definitely a, a great advantage for consumers, for viewers, for masses as a whole in terms of, uh, uh, you know, now choosing to have the convenience uh, and cost effective mediums to uh, consume uh, the kind of entertainment that they're looking at. Uh, at the same time, uh, over a period of time, once this whole revenge viewing, if it happens, uh, you know, subsides, I also feel that people, because they've now got used to in a country like India, where 70 percent of the population is in the rural space, uh, has access to technology, but not as much or good Internet speeds or something of that sort. Uh, of course, it's the uh, cheapest when it comes to data, number one in the world in terms of the cost of data. So it's there everywhere, but maybe not, uh, you know, uh, as much as uh, other developed nations. But uh, what I see is people will now 
tell themselves that look if i have to go and spend that top dollars for going in a cinema outing and beyond buying tickets for myself and my friends or family also you know spend on the f, f- food and beverages I, i would want to be selective into what i go and see you know because i have the ott options now i have the ott platforms so i could enjoy it at my time at my leisure and with people i want to but if i really have to go and spend a lot of money let me be pretty selective is what i see so people who make big budget films films which can do well on the box office uh, they will have to also be very calculative now going forward uh, in this post pandemic era about uh, you know the profitability because people will end up being very very picky very very choosy in the content they want to go and see so i i think these are these couple of perspectives from my end that there are a lot of advantages going forward uh, because of the way we have to now adapt to what we have witnessed over the last one and a half year with the pandemic and there are certain disadvantages too eventually i feel consumer is always the winner uh, and uh, you know uh, the entrepreneurs the content creators producers actors everybody will have to now be pretty uh, more selective more uh, thoughtful uh, of what they need to do what they need to be a part of and also uh, get their math their entire planning in a little more refined and a you know certain way so that's a bit of from my side i hope my perspective you know helps uh, you guys and the audience here no absolutely it was very well put you articulated it so well uh, you know giving uh, the the experience part of it and you know the comparison between the two so i so we talked you know most mostly on the on the creation side of it what i wanted to ask a little bit to you punit is on the production side of it now um because you know you being a producer uh, you know you, you you know the entire cycle of things so a lot of daily wage workers um uh, are part of the production and they have suffered a lot during the pandemic so now how are things for them because uh, when we talk about impact that's what we are talking and you know about um, countries now coming out from the covid now that the film shootings are i assume have re- start have resumed Yes. uh what is it like for them and what initiatives were launched if you can sh- throw some light during this pandemic uh, that you know uh, I, you know because um you're primarily talking here about hindi cinema bollywood that they have come up with uh, during this trying times because uh here i would like to bring uh, to everyone's notice to all the viewers who are who are you know watching globally is that uh, hindi cinema or indian cinema at large is always always um, very much they are very you know very supportive of any causes when you know the country is uh, comes when there are any crises so um you know really um, i have grown it grown up i grew up in india so i have always watched it and i kind of i really admire and uh, you know all the pillars of the industry so over to you um Uh, put it on so uh, uh, thanks for sharing those wonderful things about your uh, own experience and knowledge about how sensitive our industry is or people within the industries towards the needs of its ecosystem so to be very honest priya uh, to give you a real uh, practical uh, scenario right now uh, things are pretty much back to normal of course with all the covid uh, protocols in place for the people involved in the entire film making process in the production of the content uh, uh, but something very interesting that i'd like to share uh, about the earlier months and a uh, couple of quarters of uh, the covid pandemic we had the lockdown starting end of march and then you know that from right from april uh, going up to at least another 5 6 months uh i'm sure you all would have experienced too but even if somebody sneezed 10 buildings away 10 blocks away and you would be like oh my god that's like a terrorist attack <laughs> so uh, you know the, the media had kind of also built so much fear in us and of course we all had to take precaution but you know it was a lot uh, with the amount of content we were consuming through news media and internet media and all of it so uh, there was a lot of fear that fear basically moved a lot of people within the industry who had the ability the capacity financially 
uh, or influence wise to make an impact and i'm sure it's a known fact not just in india but globally uh, while of course we all humans are sensitive but you know people in the creative fields when i talk about artists uh, actors they are a bit more sensitive and a bit more yeah, uh, you know ev- emotional towards uh, uh, things uh, of such magnitude and it was fantastic to see that uh, various a listers uh, and everybody at their own levels and capacities did a lot of impact uh, i have a beyond uh, you know uh, cinema uh, in which i have a lot of passion and which is why i'm involved in it and i made a film and i have some ips which we are developing and now you know we are going into developing cinemas for the rural audience which doesn't exist in my country my core business is into healthcare so knowing so having so many friends associates colleagues in the film industry and also being a part of uh, you know uh, my healthcare business i had so many f- people from the industry who came and said that could we uh, you know do something when it comes to health could we come and support your uh, organization in helping people uh, i i i i know how uh, i w- i'm not talking about small numbers but millions of dollars from individuals within the industry were given to the prime minister's fund uh, were given to uh, you know the chief minister's fund so maybe they known as premiers in other countries but you know the head of the state in india is known as the chief minister the chief minister's fund the nation's prime minister's fund uh, you know they all affiliated associated themselves with individual not one but multiple ngos organizations uh, where right from health to food supplies uh, to several initiatives that it took a part of so i think it showed the solidarity the sensitivity the commitment towards not just uh, the people within uh, the film industry but for uh, with the impact that they make uh, for the uh, overall humanity that their industry came forward individuals with industry came forward and did It's talking specifically on the production side of it uh, with several associations several uh, committees which are in place to uh, you know take care of interest of people uh within the uh, sector within the industry uh, these people also went forward to run drives where they could find out because of lack of income lack of uh, you know uh, any uh, financial stability how during the pandemic time when people had no work no income they could be reached out they could be helped out so these kind of initiatives were definitely ongoing at least for the first 6 7 8 months of the lockdown that we all experienced and uh, it just showed that you know uh, these kind of events only bring people forward only show the right true nature of humanity of i mean you know nobody is evil uh, from birth or something of that sort but it's just that we get so busy with lives and we don't have time to you know do something for the society and it's pretty much individualistic but this see this event this pandemic showed that you know eventually we all humans equals and you know we all are sensitive towards needs of people around us our ecosystem and because time permitted uh, magnitude of the issue was so large uh, bollywood specifically i'm sure it happened across the world but i have witnessed it myself i've been a part of many of these initiatives that they really were very very sensitive very very caring towards trying to make as much impact as they could and i think the people who benefited out of it would also remember this for a long time that we had a rough patch and the industry of it which we are a part of uh, you know they were, they did try to stand by us in whatever way possible so that only makes things better that only makes things you know on a positive side in the way forward so going forward i think precautions is of course important and it will continue for a long time but things are pretty much back to normal uh, and as i said in the first part of the conversation uh, everybody is now very thoughtful of the kind of projects they get involved in the kind of execution that uh, they should look at the kind of content that they should create so that's where i think things are going from my side well it's wonderful to hear that you know things are moving in positive direction so now from <laughs> india we go to europe so uh, benjamin uh right. you are founder and producer of primo pictures so uh i know primo pictures is um, a singapore based company but you shuttle between europe and uh, singapore 
So um, are things same in terms of the functioning of the entertainment industry in Asia and Europe post pandemic or the challenges are different in uh, this both continents? Yeah, thank you, Priya. No, I think uh, the challenges are very similar and I think we've all been through uh, uh, the causalities of the pandemic lockdown. Uh, there's been this uh, fantastic transformation of uh, the film industry. Uh, we see the advent of OTT platforms, streaming platforms, really gaining uh, momentum and uh, increasing market shares. It's something that never happened before. Uh, if you can believe that Squid Game is now valued at $1 billion. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, when I was born, it's something that people could have never imagined. So there's this fantastic transformation and shift towards uh, OTT and streaming platforms. And that comes uh, with, with benefits, uh, but also caveats. I think the benefits are there's this democratization of, of media access. Like Punit said, uh, you know, a few years ago, you could n never have imagined that uh, people watch uh, movies uh, in some uh, impoverished or rural parts of the world, but it's, it's, it's possible today, it's feasible today. So you have this fantastic democratization uh, effect that comes from that spurring of OTT and streaming platforms. Um, at the same time, I think, uh, you know, um, th there, are, there are more technical transformations happening to the market that are worth talking about. Uh, this OTT infrastructure and streaming infrastructure is largely based on uh, big data, server technology, the cloud technology. Uh, but the way I see it and the way things are evolving and uh, with such fast pace, um, they, could be, they could be the advent of a new type of technology that really uh, uh, decentralize uh, 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 data and, and, and actually... Uh, uh, provides greater benefit to the entire ecosystem, and that's blockchain technology. So thinking we may actually move from server technology, big data technology, to decentralized uh, community-based technology, uh, it's something formidable, and it's something that is happening today. Uh, I'm sure um, our, our uh, fellow speaker, uh, Fred, may have followed uh, that uh, Wong Kar Wai put some of his movie uh, for sale uh, on the blockchain. So his movie is actually becoming part of, of decentralized uh, technology. And this is something that could be foreseen as, as really taking a leap in the future. Uh, will actually blockchain technology play a role uh, you know, uh, on, on, on the industry level? Uh, I'm keen to hear your thoughts as well, Priya, so we keep this uh, interactive, knowing that you're, you're, you're very much so in that, in that space. Um, but now, in parallel to what happened to the industry and the technology transformation, I think the pandemic uh, also um, uh, uh, for sure had some negative uh, causalities and, and negative effects. And uh, lots of the friends and filmmakers and actors I work with uh, really went through a void uh, in trying to find a job uh, and trying to, to make a living. Uh, and it has shocked the mentalities. Uh, and, and we could never have foreseen such a big impact, whether it's in Asia or in Europe. I think there's convergence, uh, you know, on, on that level and the fact that the pandemic really impacted, uh, you know, the space. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to come up with, uh, uh, you know, a few thoughts on, on how actually more positive the, the pandemic could be leveraged and utilized in thinking, like Fred said, is there a role for the film industry uh, to play vis-a-vis -vis education, uh, the education of the youth? Uh, as, as leaders in the industry, can we actually reflect on how, what, what is our role and responsibility, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis education of the youth uh, and the type of content that is actually developed uh, within the film space, uh, you know, connects that? But at the same time, there's this big uh, question about sustainability. And I think Fred was, uh, was um, uh, very correct in pointing that out. Uh, the energy footprint of making movies today uh, surpasses, uh, you know, all uh, reasonable uh, thresholds. Um, 
whether we're thinking about server and data technology or, or decentralized blockchain technology, the, the, the impact on the environment is so big. So once again, as leaders in industry, don't we have a role and a responsibility to actually come up with solutions and say, you know, from tomorrow onwards, let's make a movie uh, with solar panels. Uh, or, or, you know, let, let's try and come up with, uh, with more sustainable uh, solutions to making films. Um, and I think the pandemic played a role, uh, you know, uh, really triggering those questions. Um, yeah, uh, that's about it, Priya. No, you brought, uh, brought up very uh, uh, interesting points and you reiterated what uh, Fred had already mentioned. Uh, so you were talking about education and, you know, what Puneet mentioned about, you know, something for rural people have to be done. Now, you, Fred and uh, Puneet, collectively what you mentioned, you we were basically talking about was the cause-based narratives, okay? how that can be done or social impact stuff, how that can be done. So, so Benjamin, can you just throw some light on um, how can these social impact subjects or cause bait narratives uh, gain momentum in the age of online streaming where um, I know the young population would be very receptive to it, but do you think would the mainstream uh, consumers uh, be interested in those kind of narratives? Because at the end of the day, every film has to make money, um, you know, uh, uh, for the survival of its uh, creators. Right, right. Uh, thank you for this question, Priya. I, I, I do think there's a, there's a broader ethical and, and moral agenda that should be addressed. Uh, because for sure, I mean, uh, you know, the film industry is business uh, as it is. Uh, but one ought to think, uh, do we want to give, uh, you know, the next generation the impression that, you know, we live in a squid game uh, universe, uh, you know, a dystopian universe, um, you know, where, where there's no hope for the future. Um, you know, and, and well, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of dystopia and, and you know, uh, uh, of, of that genre. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'm a bit biased in that answer, but I would still say, okay, th there needs to be the, uh, the question, uh, we, we need to reflect on that. Like, is, 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 is it not, uh, the, you know, the place of the film industry as leaders? Don't we have uh, a role to play in uh, providing ethical, uh, narratives and, and content wise? Uh, so whether, you know, whether we like Squid Game because it's, it's, it's trendy, it's fashionable, uh, you know, uh, do, is, is there something beyond that that we need to reflect on, uh, uh you know, quality wise, the content, should it be based on, on, on those, uh, on those principle or, or can we actually come up with something a bit more positive, a bit more, um, uh, you know, a, a bit more optimistic for the future is, is kind of where, where I am right now in, in that consideration. Uh, but Priya, if, if you can imagine, um, uh, my company is in the first year, uh, of its business. Uh, so not only am I the Benjamin of the room, but, uh, my company itself, uh, is, is a baby company. And, um, I still recall back in January when, when my friends were asking me, is it sane for you to enter into the, the film space, into the film industry uh, during the pandemic, during the COVID uh, lockdown? And uh, it's, it's a question I'm still, uh, uh, I'm still struggling to answer. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, but for sure, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I work with amazing talents, uh, amazing artists and filmmakers. And that's very positive as an entrepreneur to think that uh, you know, there are these amazing people out there. Uh, but I would, I would hope that, uh, maybe the pandemic and maybe the effects of the pandemic actually trigger more interest from the young people into venturing into film. And we need more people to be, uh, in that space, in that industry and, and come up with more unique, uh, content, uh, you know, more artistic content. So I would encourage any young people here. Uh, to reach out and, and, and seek advice on how to venture into the film space. It's, 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 it's a fantastic uh, space uh, to venture in. Um, mm. So um, uh, now uh, we are about uh, 
nine minutes away uh, from our closing. So I, this is a, you know, question that is common to you and Puneet. And then I have one question, quick question for Fred. So um, you are a newbie in this space, uh, Benjamin. Um, so what were your challenges in terms of, uh, and, uh, or let's put it this way, what were some of the successes and failures that you can share with us? Um, and uh, what is your message to the young people who are, you know, trying to make uh, in this space? Maybe some of them have networks, some of them don't. But what is it? Keep it short because, you know, mm. we are getting to the close of the session. Sure. I, I keep it very brief, Priya. Thanks for this question. No, I think uh, my, my, my first advice is probably don't launch a film business uh, during a, a COVID pandemic. Uh, I think that could be a, a good best practice for, for the young uh, guys out there. Um, now, that being said, I think uh, if, if I can give one recommendation is always focus on the people and surround yourself with people that continue to inspire you uh, and, uh, and, and, and work in trust. Um, but there's so much that can be done out there. Uh, I meet uh, countless young guys and they are far younger than me. They're in the 20s and they're very promising, talented filmmakers, uh, you know, for, uh, from Asia, from, from Europe. And uh, I want to say continue to do it. Yes, we had a, a bit of a setback with the COVID, but continue to believe in what you do. Uh, you know, the market is there. Uh, tomorrow, we never know, Netflix may actually transform itself into a streaming platform for short films, uh, for court metrage or for, for more artistic content. And uh, the opportunities will lie there. Yeah, wonderful. Puneet, would you like to add something? Uh, being that you also have uh, entered into, you know, uh, the, the big world of Indian Hindi cinema. I feel uh, my uh, short bit of uh, take on this particular question would be that, uh, you know, whether it's films or, uh, you know, any space. And as, uh, you know, Benjamin also rightly mentioned, uh, be committed be dedicated to what you're doing. There's space for, uh, and when you want, when you when you're passionate about something, there's always uh, uh, an opportunity there. Uh, there's always uh, something, some positive outcomes which you can look at. You need the right support. So again, uh, coupling what uh, you know, Benjamin said, they have the right people around you, the right talent, the right motivated people. Uh, I think uh, uh, there's a lot of talent across. There's a lot of, uh, you know, hardworking professionals around. Surround yourself with them, yes. And uh, I, I just feel that uh, if you are committed towards your goal, uh, there is nothing that would stop. The time would differ for people. Uh, you know, you would come across uh, wrong people too. Uh, with When uh, Benjamin mentioned about trust, sometimes you land up uh, uh, getting into uh trusting the wrong people, but they, they are the best lessons as well. They're the best lessons. They bring out the best in you. Uh, they make you strong when it comes to adversities. So I think uh, you should read a lot, uh, learn a lot from people. These kind of forums are great to understand experiences of people. Try to gather. There's so much content out there. There's so much quality material out there. It's all available free, honestly. So, uh, you know, just assimilate that. Have your own mind to, you know, dissect it uh, and, you know, bring the best out of it. Apply those learnings in your day-to-day -day practical life. And uh, whether it's filmmaking, cinemas, movies, or any other industry, I would say, uh, your commitment, your learnings, your experiences, and your focus to your goal will take you there. So that's a bit from my end. Very well said. So, uh, you know, we open with uh, uh, Fred and uh, we are going to close this session with Fred as well. So, Fred, uh, you are the veteran of uh, the media and the entertainment industry. And, you know, Benjamin and Puneet are um, stepping into this, uh, you know, uh, with some of the success, some of successful projects uh, behind them. What what advice would you give this um, young entrepreneurs? Uh, thank you, Praya. I hope my closing is looking for the future is friendship, collaborative, inclusive, and collaboration with all parties together. 
my good friend from Benjamin, I talked I talk to him already, say, you are in Belgium, which is the headquarter of the European Union, and European country, United, have many good experience. How do you share with the rest of the world that you have policy, plan, that you can uh, in, induce all of us, that we can all improve together? Puja, you are from India, which is a Bollywood. Everybody knows that you make the more film than Hollywood. But we also know that in India, you have one so many different language and different location, uh, country in location. So you cannot distribute your film in one language, local language, because you have too many local language. But you are the country with lots of Billions of people, you are the country with a very strong accounting, computer, and all this new technology. So with now today, automated translation. Any one language the whole Indian can cover, then you don't have to remake all these different version. If you get that done, the whole Asia can follow, the whole world can follow. Now finally, while our Wonderful lady from Boston. America is the one where we have all the new technology. All the major companies, Amazon, Apple, Google, you name it. They are the biggest operation in the world market. And with your technology, they are already can English, Chinese, Japanese, French, you know, it's auto translation and you will become even more better. So if we all today, today with your initiative that we meet together, I think we collaborated, inclusive work together and hope we can help inspire the rest of the industry to follow. Thank you so much. So I, I really want to thank um, Mr. Fred Wang uh, from Salon Media, uh, Mr. Puneet Desai from October Cinemas and Mr. Benjamin Galazzo from uh, uh, from uh, Primo Pictures for joining us. You, all of you shared some wonderful insights into, um, you know, uh, the impact part of a thing. And what is more important in um, is technology, but at the same time, collaboration is uh, a key. Um, you know, friendship and trust is extremely important in building anything. And, um, uh, you know, why we have uh, uh, platforms like OTT, which have surged during uh, the pandemic. But uh, as uh, Benjamin rightly put it, blockchain uh, is uh, gaining uh, momentum and NFTs looks like is the future. So with that, I want to thank all of you for joining us. Um, have a wonderful uh, day, rest of your day and um, see you soon. And uh, Thank you very much for joining. This was a wonderful session and uh, I enjoyed moderate, moderating the panel and um, I hope um, you enjoyed this discussion which was very collaborative and informative. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Priya. Thank you, Priya. Thank you, thank you, Priya. Thank you. Pleasure thank seeing you. you all. Take care. Oh, bye. 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 Okay. Bye.